Now it would be nice if I could somehow tell that I'm actually damaged as well. And rather than creating versions of all of these sprites all over again, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, is it transform? No, it's probably color sprite. I'm going to change this alpha value. And in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that 0.5. What this does is it make alpha in gaming terms stands for how transparent a color is. So alpha of 1.0 is you can't see through it at all, it's totally opaque. A alpha of 0 is totally invisible. You can to completely see through it and all the things in between. So I'm going to make it so that I'm partially see through here and then when my alarm goes back off I'm going to set my alpha back to 1. I'm blending white in as well with this thing, but that's fine. White is the default color. There we go. There we go. So it takes damage that way. I just noticed that uh, these uh, checks to the left and right are also causing problems when I land on the enemy. So I'm going to want to make these not ground as well. So let's see. So I want to check to see if there's ground, x, let's see, I'm looking left, so minus 8, y, make sure there's not ground there. So all the things that were just checking for all objects, I'm just going to be checking for ground. Otherwise I'm going to get stuck in the enemy and that's kind of embarrassing. Make sure there's no ground, x plus 8, y, not ground. So I run into him, I'm invincible, I'm invincible, there we go. Now what about the enemy moving? So it would be nice if he actually moved around. Um, I'm going to make it so that my enemies just go back and forth between two invisible blocks I'm going to create. So I'm going to create a sprite, I'm just going to create a new one by editing and go to new. Sure, 32 by 32. You're a black sprite. How exciting. So this is going to be enemy block sprite. And I'm going to create an object, which is going to be an enemy block object. And my goal with this thing is it's going to be in the room. So if we look at my room here. I'm going to place the enemy somewhere that I want it to go back and forth. Let me put the ground back in there. Oh, by the way, notice that the enemy slightly overlaps the ground and that causes it to delete it. There's a spot down here which says delete underlying. I can do that, uh, unclick that checkbox, and then they'll move back and forth. Also, if I don't want it to be exactly aligned on the grid, if you hold down Alt while you're dragging, it makes it so it doesn't snap to the grid. Sometimes that's nice to make sure that it lines up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this enemy, place an enemy block here and here, and just say go back and forth and bounce off those two. My avatar doesn't have any collisions with those things, so it's going to totally ignore it. And the enemy's just going to be the thing moving back and forth. So in the enemy, when he's first created, I'm just going to have him start moving left, speed of 3. If he has a collision with the enemy block, he's just going to switch directions. So he's just going to reverse horizontal. I'm going to make the enemy block invisible, and let's see what happens. Whoa. I should make it so my avatar is uh, not going to instantly kill him. Over there, monkey. There we go. You could put in gravity and all of that, but then you would basically have to put all of the code that the avatar has as far as gravity goes into the enemy as well. 
One nice thing about this is I don't have to worry about a path being a particular length or making a new path for every single enemy. And I can just put in two blocks wherever I want it to and have the enemy do that. Now, one warning, I would have to place enemy, those enemy bounce blocks here and here if I want them to go back and forth at this bottom point, but that's fine. One thing to watch out for with delete underlying is you can accidentally place two or three objects all on top of one another. So be careful about that. Normally you want delete underlying to be the general rule unless there's some particular reason you want to place things on top of one another. Now, this, this room looks kind of bland with these ground blocks. Something I might want to do is actually place things in the background and make these ground blocks invisible. So the ground blocks still act like collisions, but then I can see whatever is in the background as far as what it looks like. There are some backgrounds that lend themselves well to this. So if I create a background, I believe they're called tile sets. Yeah, so here's a platform game that's in the Game Maker 8 backgrounds tile sets. So if I say use this as a tile set, I can say maybe 32 by 32. So if you get a uh, tile set, it looks something like this, and you can get the grid to evenly space. When I do this, let's call this tiles underscore b for background. When I go into tiles in the room, I can choose out that particular tile set, and then I can place things that look like tiles in the background. So it looks a little bit like placing objects. And in particular, what I'm going to want to do is place tiles that look solid where all of these ground blocks are. So I can unclick show objects, place tiles in the background where I want it, maybe here, 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 here. Let's see, show the objects again. So something like that. Make the ground block not visible, and then when I run the game, you can see what the tiles are, but I still act like I'm hitting walls. So that's how tile sets work. It's a variant of a background that you can actually place in the room.